before the beginning, there was him. All things gigantic, volcanic, and romantic were first found in him. The very fabric of time was knitted by him. Future, present, past, guess where you'll find him. He is El Olam, was God, is God, forever God. While hearts are asleep, he intercedes, singing our praises in our wildest dreams, colors our darkest moments in Technicolor and HD. And when no one can see our pain, he sees. His breath gave birth to a symphonic universe, orchestral ecosystems on a planet that's biodiverse. Blowholes exhaling, eagles dovetailing, bacteria, blue whales, and icebergs set sailing. Every wing beat, every molecule, every growing follicle, every stampede of hooves, every bird song so audible. An unyielding fiery supernova called love. In his name prayers are whispered, uttered and groaned. His name fulfills longings and men's broken bones. Mountains and mammals shriek his glory with elation. He is Elohim, the God who baked creation. I'm talking about. Would you stand to your feet with us this morning? I know uh, tonight, or not tonight, this morning is going to be a really good night, but uh, I got one thing that I got to ask from you guys. I want you guys to uh, sing as loud as you can with us this morning. You know, it's not just about us up on the stage, but it's about all of us as the body of Christ giving God all the glory that he deserves. Amen. It doesn't really sound too confident out there. You guys believe that this morning? Come on, I know it's early, but we're going to do this together. We're going to give God everything that we got. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's go. You ready? ready. You ready this morning? Woo! Let's sing it together. And I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty breaks and treasures that fail are never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied in hearing your love. Sing it together. There's not a place 
Sing it with me. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. Come on, every voice. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a to home. 
goodness you guys how amazing are the words of that song I mean just as I'm singing it and I'm like I'm almost to the point of tears because it's just so powerful to actually speak those words out of my mouth back to the Lord you know and it just reminds us of who he is and where we are positioned in our relationship with him and god is so good amen go ahead and have a seat say hi to somebody as you're having a seat this morning so good to see all of you today today is a good day isn't it today is a good day to be in the house of the lord it's a good day to be alive it's a great day to be living in the coachella valley and it's an incredibly amazing day to be worshiping at C3 Church. Amen? Yes. So good to see all of you today. You guys are looking good today. You must have had a great week. You all look amazing. Well, I have, I just want to share with you, we were talking in our pre-service pre rally with our Dream Team volunteers this morning, and we shared about one of our leadership qualities is love God. And... The scripture is in Acts, the fourth chapter, verse 13. It says, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Do you realize that every time that you come to church, there is a change? There's a physical change. People can tell that you have been with Jesus. People can tell that you've been in the presence of God. And it is so good to actually come into the house of God and just worship the Lord. But you know what also is so good about loving God? Is that we get to give back to the Lord. When we are so grateful for all that he's done for us, we have the opportunity to give out of our love for the Lord. Amen? Amen. It's okay. We can be happy about giving to the Lord. Yes, we can. Maybe we need to practice that because, you know, Scripture tells us that God is unwilling to abandon a cheerful giver whose heart is in their giving. You know, many times we're afraid that God's going to abandon us, but the Word tells us He will not abandon a cheerful giver. So let's practice being cheerful this morning. You ready? We're going to give to God this morning. Woo! Yes, amen. Our ushers, our amazing ushers are 
in front of you. If you are giving this morning and you need an envelope, they have envelopes for you. If you're giving by cash or by credit card, you can use the envelopes. You can also use your church center app. You can just scan the QR code that's on the screen there, and it will bring you immediately up into our giving page on your phone. It makes it super easy, super convenient. Um, if you're giving by check this morning, you can make your check out to C3 Church. Otherwise, you can give by cash or by credit card. You can give in the buckets. We also have the kiosk outside um, in the lobby if you want to give there. But, um, you know, it's such a, it's a blessing to be able to give to the Lord because it's a kingdom principle. And any time that we have opportunity to participate in God's kingdom principles, we know that we're positioning ourselves for God to do something incredible in our lives. Amen. Well, I'm going to pray over the offering this morning, and then I have just a couple of announcements to share with you. So, Father God, I thank you for what you are doing in the lives of us here at C3 Church. And I pray for everybody that's here today, Father. I pray for those generous hearts. I pray that you would bless them today, Father God. I pray that as they, um, as they commit in their hearts, Father, to give to you, Lord, we realize that we're not giving to a church. We're giving through a church to give into the kingdom of God. And I thank you, Father God, that you're going to bless each and every giver today. Bless their, um, bless their hands as they um, just put their hands to work, Father God. And I pray for prosperity and blessing in every area of their finances. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, a couple of things today. Um, we have, some of you that have children may have noticed that we don't have children's ministry today. So here at C3, over the last year and a half, we set in place a policy for the safety of all of those who attend C3 Church, that whenever there was a, a possible COVID exposure, um, we would ask those who were exposed to stay home. Now, I am so grateful, Pastor Eddie and I were talking about this the other day, that we have never had an exposure here in the building. That's amazing. Never. We also have been very careful in making sure that everything is clean and sanitized all the time. We have our air conditioning units uh, serviced every couple of months with a solution that kills 99.9% uh, .9 of the COVID virus. I mean, we've been doing everything we can to make sure that everything's safe. Um, but this week, there was a possible exposure. Well, there was an exposure and a possible risk during the week with some of our members that were spending time together. Nothing happened within the building. But over because of us wanting to make sure that we give an, an abundance of caution and um, care about everybody's safety, anybody who had even had that possible exposure, we've asked to stay home. Children's ministry today, slim worship team, small but amazingly mighty and anointed, wouldn't you say? And I share all that just to let you know that we are always going to, as pastors, do everything that we can to make sure that you are safe. So when you come, you don't have to worry that we're being careless and putting you at risk for COVID. That being said, we never know who's going to come through the door. Um, but as far as everything that we can control, we're going to make sure that you're coming into a safe, clean, sanitized place so you can worship the Lord with peace. Amen? Amen. Yes. Praise God for safety. Also, I want to remind you guys that this Wednesday night is Youth Nugget Night. So the teenagers are going to come. They're going to hang out. They're going to get their bellies full of chicken nuggets. And even more importantly, they're going to get some nuggets from the Holy Spirit. They're going to get to hang out with each other and just be teenagers and have fun. So if you have teenagers, make sure they're here. Um, what time is that at? 6 p.m. this Wednesday. Bring your teenagers. Um, and if you have friends that have teenagers, make sure they come so they can have a good time. Teenagers need to have something to do to hang out, right? And then also next Sunday is week one of Growth Track. So if you, if you have not had an opportunity to be part of the week one of Growth Track, that is our membership um, assimilation. So if you are, have been coming to C3 and you have not yet been part of that and want to make C3 your home church, then make sure that you get into the Growth Track. You can jump.
jump in first, second, or third week of any month, but next week starts our first week, and you can sign up on the Church Center app, or you can also go to our website at c3ps.church. This is a lot of announcements, but I wanted to make sure that you guys understand that we're always doing what's best for you, so I spent a lot of time talking about cleanliness and health with the C3, with the COVID. But anyway, um, that's all I have for you guys. Are you guys ready to continue worshiping the Lord? Pastor Eddie's excited that I'm done. Go ahead and stand to your feet and let's continue to worship. I'm actually like, if we could stop the track really quick. I'm just really excited to be here to church right now. I don't know if you guys feel the same to just be here in the presence of God. It's been a hard week, <laughs> you know. It's been a hard year. It's been a hard couple months. <laughs> but I'm here and I'm singing through my 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 exhaustion. I'm seeing through my pain because I know God's gonna meet me here where I'm at. So. <laughs> So if you are feeling anything today, anxiety, depression, pain, resentment, unforgiveness, whatever you're dealing with today, just try to sing with, just try to worship through your pain. Try to worship through your anxiety. Try to worship through, even though it's so much harder than you think, but God's gonna meet you where you are. And so as we continue with the, the next song, I just pray that you just close your eyes and you just worship through whatever you're going through because God is gonna meet you where you are. Death is overcome. 
what it says. It says, in the darkest night, in the worst moment of your life, that you look and you never thought that, that anything would come your way because you're a Christian, because you're a believer. Just because we're Christians and just because we're believers doesn't mean that things don't happen. But the great thing about it is that God, the God we serve, He can light up that dark situation. He can break off the chains of depression and discouragement. He can come and heal you where you're at, whether it's physically or mentally or spiritually, wherever you're at. He can bring light to that situation. And that's what I love about church and being together with believers is that we're there for one another. There's many people that are going through struggles right now, and I know that Isabel's watching online. And, but you know what? When I talk to Isabel, and just the pain that she's in and what she's going through and not only physically in her body, but then within her house. And just, if anyone has a has a, a right to be mad at God or be discouraged or be frustrated. But I tell you, when I hear her, I'm just like, God, am I even saved? Because she inspires me. She gives me hope. And that's what we need. We need God to revive this land. We need God to revive hearts. We need God to revive this city that we live in. The 
that revival takes place, that God brings back to life those broken bones, those dried bones, where it looks like there is no hope. We need to have the faith when they threw the dead body into the bones of Elisha. The very dead bones were preaching and brought life. That's what we need, that our lives would continue to speak of God's goodness, God's faithfulness. Can we sing a little bit more? He's overcome. You He's already won. God Come on, church. Come on. Oh, the darkest night. You can light it up. You can light it up. Oh, God of revival. Let hope arise. Death is overcome. Oh, come on. I'm, I love hearing your voices. You've already won. Oh, God come on. I want you guys to sing that everybody that is watching online is going to hear you guys sing. Come on. Father, we come to you today, Lord. You are the God of revival. Jesus, you said as you build your church that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I pray today. Today, lives are going to be changed in this house. Those that are watching online, those in here in scripture, they're going to sense the presence of God. Father, I just pray Lord, that you would use me. Use me, Lord. Use me in this place. Speak through me, Lord. That revival takes place. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Jesus, have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. Come on, give a shout. Shout like you mean it. Shout like you're in love with Jesus. Woo. Amen. Well, thank you. Didn't our team do awesome? Isn't it good to see Lana? Lana up here singing. You guys can have a seat. We're so glad that you're here today, and I'm Pastor Eddie. I'm not sure if, if anybody's here visiting us for the very first time. If, if this is your first time, just slip up your hand. I saw, I'll write a hand over here. Anybody else? God bless you, and if you have a few hands, and little hands, and larger hands coming up. Let's give a big hand for those. You guys, first time? Is that, yeah? All right. It's, it's okay. You guys don't need to be embarrassed. I'm not going to embarrass you, and um, we're just so glad that you're here with us. Uh, we believe that God is using us as a church. There's lots of great churches, don't get me wrong. There's amazing churches in this valley. We all have our different assignments. And um, one of our assignments is to love people to life. We're not here to judge. We're not here to uh, point out people's faults. We're just here to love on them. Jesus loved us even in all our faults and all of our shortcomings God loves us and we want to love people to life I want to welcome all of you that are watching online 
Uh, today's going to be a great day. Before I get into my message, I just wanted to share a couple things of uh, next week. Um, those of you who have been a part of this church, I don't know if you know uh, Nate and Laura. Stand up. Turn around. <laughs> Next Sunday, uh, you guys can see, have a seat. <laughs> She's like, how long do I stand up? Uh, Next Sunday is going to be their last Sunday here. Um, they came. Uh, Nate has been in the military for 20 years now and um, been moving on. He, he moves from... They've moved many times, started off in Germany and just Europe and Vegas and now here. And then now they're going on their new, next assignment. So they were here four years uh, with us. And um, last four years ago, and I've looked up, they came four years ago, um, right around this time. And I had a word for them. I didn't know them. It was their first time here visiting the church. And they just got involved and started serving Knowing that this is going to be temporary, um, but that's what I loved about them. Because there's so many people that say, well, I can't serve, I got, and they make all kinds of excuses. And if anybody could have made an excuse, they could have made an excuse saying, well, you know what, we don't want to get close to people. We don't want to build relationships because, you know what, we're going to be going. And with that, that in mind, and, but they just jumped in been a part of our leadership team when we had the coffee. Laura was over that and ran the venue coffee. And Nate, wherever there was a need, would come and join and get involved. And there's some of you that you would go golfing with him. He loves his golf game along with Pastor Al. And I actually skip back there. There's one of the golf buddies and Rob and some others. But so next Sunday is going to be their last Sunday with us. And so we're going to pray them out. And I want to encourage you to come out. And maybe you watch online and you want to come and say bye because they're leaving on Monday, right? They're leaving or maybe even Sunday afternoon. But we want, uh, if you want to come and say goodbye and just tell them how much they've been a blessing to you. So we're going to pray them out um, next week. It's always bittersweet. You know, uh, it's, it's sad. But I know God has them on a new assignment and a new journey just as they've blessed us here, um, God's going to bless them in their new season. But just as we've also often said, as God kind of moves people on, God brings others in. And so uh, we're excited because uh, not next week but the week after, we have a new pastor that's going to be coming on staff with us. Um, his name is Pastor Richard Villanueva. Some of you may not know who that is, and so let me explain. He was my spiritual son in the youth, when I was youth pastor. He, was my, he became my, my uh, associate youth pastor, and then when we came out 14 years ago, he became the youth pastor in San Bernardino. He was there for uh, 14 years as well on full time, and so um, he's in a new season as well. And so he's going to be coming on with us and him and his beautiful wife, Pastor Michelle, um, she's a powerhouse. So not next week, but the week after, uh, he'll be preaching. And, uh, and then I think the following week, Michelle or, and then, so it's going to be just, it's going to be a good month, but we're excited to have them come on. Um, they know, I mean, we just love them. They're just amazing. So uh, we're excited about that. So want you to come out and um, that following week it's going to be a great week in the house of God but next week it's going to be powerful are you guys ready for the word ready for the word March 8th 2020 I preached the message from this pulpit and I believe it was a prophetic word from God, even though at the time I didn't know. I just, you know, I'm always led. I just, I, I'm just led by God. God 
what would you have me to preach? A lot of times they get frustrated with the sound because I'm supposed to send my messages on Thursday, but it's like, you know, I still, God's kind of working with me and I might change things up. And, but I preached the, the message not realized, realizing that looking back, God was speaking something and saying something to us as a church. It was March 8th, 2020. That following Sunday, we said, we're not having church. Many of you probably, if I asked you, do you remember the message? You probably don't. I didn't even know. And then all of a sudden, I began to look back and realize that the title of that message was hidden and valued. And the scripture that I used was Psalm 11911, one of my favorite scriptures that says, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And it was, I started preaching about the value of the word of God. The value, the importance. Because the things that you hide, you value. Things that are important to you, you have you 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 have a safe because you're you want to hide them and you you hide the safe in a room because it's important to you, and and, and so when we started going through it, when I started thinking about it, I didn't, I didn't realize and hiding the word of how important it was going to be to the next year and a half of life as a Christian as a believer. It told me a lot about the importance of valuing the word and hiding the word in our heart because many people that did not take that message as important, that did not take that message to heart, that don't take the word of God as priority in their lives, they had a struggle in their faith. Many walked away from God. Many questioned their faith because they did not hide the word of God, and we hide those things that are valuable. And it says here, Lord, your word have I hid in my heart that I should not sin against you. But I like to say it like this, Lord, your word have I hid in my heart, not so much in the negative that I might not sin against you, but Lord, your word I, I read and I, I put down in my heart, your word that I meditate on, your word that I value so much, I put it down deep down on the inside of my heart that I might do the right thing. Why would, I think sometimes we focus so much on, I, I, I don't want to do it because I don't want to do that. But it's like, I want to, what does your word say? Because I want to make the right decisions. I want to be a good pastor. I want to be a good boss or an employee, a good husband, a, a good a wife. And Lord, your word have I hit in my heart that I might do the right thing. So the title of the message today is, is doing the right thing. How do we do the right thing? I mean, the last year and a half, how do we, how do we make the decisions in, in life, especially like I said, the last year and a half is, is made so many people having to say, am I doing the right thing? And they may space decisions on somebody's tweet, somebody's post, somebody's uh, um, ideology or somebody's own philosophy. And throughout this last year and a half, I've like, I, I have to base what we do as a pastor, what I do as a husband, what as I, I have to base it all. I want to do the right things and I have to do it based on what my knowledge of the word of God that's hidden in my heart. You, every day, will make a decision to do the right thing, but your decision is going to be based on how much of the Word of God you know in your heart. How much is hidden on the inside of you. You know, there, there's, and you say, Pastor, you probably know lots of scriptures. You know what, I know lots of scriptures, but I don't know exactly where they're at in the Bible. I just know they're there. I could, I could quote this one, Psalm 119, 11, Lord, your word, if I hit in my heart, that I shall not sin against you, John 3, 16. You know, uh, you know, there's certain scriptures that I have memorized, but there's certain things that I know that I've hidden in my heart that I valued 
them so much that I hid them because I don't want somebody to come and pull them out from me. That, but when in the time comes, I'll be able to bring forth. If I got this Bible taken away from me, because people in America says, you know what, you are no longer to have uh, Bibles; they're going to be burned. It's ridiculous. You say, Pastor, that could never happen. It's ridiculous when you see books like Dr. Seuss and other these, these books that we all grow up with and we all love, but when somebody said it's bad, all of a sudden they say we have to get rid of it. What, 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 says, what tells you that this can't happen to the Word of God? When they said you have to shut down church or you can't say this and you can't say that. And so it's the Word of God that is so important. And like I said, I... I preached it the week before we shut down as a church because I said, man, we need the word of God hidden in our hearts so that we would make the right decisions over the next year and a half of the life of this church. Not that I am perfect, but I know that if I did not have the word of God, I would be a mess. I know that if I didn't have the word of God, I would probably f have fallen into more of a depressed state. I, I know if I didn't have the word of God, I probably would have had more vain imaginations in my life. I know that if I didn't have the word of God, living, you know, uh, things within our marriage, within our family, within relationships, I, I know would not have survived what we went through. And yet there's so many people that did not have that. Psalm 1 1 says, Blessed is the man. God wants you blessed. Do you believe that God wants you blessed? Do you believe that God wants nothing but good for you? We should believe that because that's what He wants. It says, Blessed is the man. How do we live a blessed life? Blessed is the man or a woman who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But this is what He does, but His delight. His excitement, his zeal, his passion is in the law of the Lord, which he meditates day and night. The word of God. He delights in the word. He delights in God's word and he meditates it. He's excited about it. And the blessed man, this, is, uh, this type of person meditates and hides the word of God in their hearts. So when tough, tough times come and opportunities arise for temptation, they come out and say, no, no, that's not what God says. When things happen, they no, 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 that, that, that's not going to happen. They say, no, no. Doing the right thing. There's three great temptations that we read about in the Bible, in life. And you could pretty much take any temptation and lump them into one of these three categories. And it shows, tells us in 1 John, the second chapter, verse 15 and 16. It says, do not love the world or the things of the world. For if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world now then it's now it's beginning to come along and say what the things that are in the world. The things of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. These temptations. When the lust of the flesh and lust of the eyes and the, the pride of life come on in, God, your word have I hid in my heart that I should do, that I should not sin against you or that I might do the right thing. When temptations come, the thing that's going to allow you to make the right decision is pulling out what's in your heart. Pulling out what's in the Bible. Last year in March of 2020 is when I spoke this message, but in January I started the one-year Bible, and I went through that whole year because that's what I said. I, you know what? Last At the beginning of 2020, 
I, there's something that was placed in my heart, man. I, we need to focus on the word. We need to get the word of God. It, it, that's how valuable it should be, valuable to those that are believers and Christians. So I went through that for, for 2020. Every day I pulled out in this. There's an Old Testament, Psalms, Proverbs, and New Testament. And every day... Like today, I went to July 25th, and I read it this morning. I made a decision, and it's hard. I've read the Bible all, you know, since I've been saved, since 1983, but I've never read it all the way through, but I've read it through in many different ways and, and, and fashions. So in 2020, I said, I need the Word of God. And so this year, we did it and said, hey, I'd love to do it with a church. And many of you started, and maybe you're having a tough time. Jump back in because it's valuable. It's important that we hide the word in our hearts because the lust of the flesh will come, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And unless we have that written word in our hearts, it's going to be hard for us to do the right thing. It's going to be hard for us to make the right decisions. Now, what happens when we hide the word of God in our heart? Well, the more that we have hidden, the more that we have take in, the more that the Holy Spirit reveals to us as we read. Because we don't read just to read. We read because, God, I want revelation. I, I want you to speak to me through this. And it should be that when you read John 3, 16, God revealed to me something new. And God will, will reveal something new. The Bible says, that the, the word says that the Bible is the living word. So it's living. It's alive. And every day that when we read it, it should be alive to us. But the more of the word that is hidden in our hearts, the greater the victories we have. I'm going to say that again. The more of the word of God hit in our hearts, the greater the victories that we're going to have. I love it, and I want you to turn there in uh, Luke in the fourth chapter because Jesus faced some temptations. Jesus went through some temptations, and he became the example to us on how important it is to value the word of God. The thing is, is like I said, when we have the more of the word of God that we have hidden in our hearts, the greater the victories we have. Because Jesus, we're going to read here in a little bit, he went through these three temptations, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the, the, the flesh, and the pride of life. We're going to see as the devil came and tempted him. But like I said, the more we have the word of God hidden in our hearts, the greater the victories we will have. Many people have enough to resist one temptation. And they're like, oh, I'm good. But Jesus, as our example, tells us, you know what? There's going to come another one. And there's going to come another one. And if you only have enough hidden in your heart for the one temptation, what happens when the next temptation comes? Or the next temptation. So you, you may be and you may know enough of the word of God where you can resist a couple things. But I'm telling you, what, when, what about the next one? And that's why we need to have enough of the hidden word of God on the inside of us that we would make the right decisions so we could have victory after victory after victory. It's, it's, it's one thing to have victory over a, over a couple things. But I'm telling you, if you are not grounded in the word of God, it's going to be easy for you to say, oh, I'm, I'm out of scriptures. That's all that was in my heart. The two scriptures that I memorized, you know, I, those th the things that I read, I, that's all I have. And then all of a sudden the temptations come. Luke in the fourth chapter, verse 1 through 13 says this. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, this is after he was baptized, J returned from the Jordan was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. He's, here was this temptation, 40 days, 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterwards, when they had ended, he was hungry. You miss one day of eating. I'm telling you, I miss... I, I, if I miss lunch and breakfast, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm hungry by the end of the day. Here's Jesus for 40 days and the very temptation that came along to him 
by the devil was, what was it? It was the lust of the flesh. The flesh wants food. The flesh wants uh, to, to, to feel needed. And so the flesh wants to, to go out and, and have a relationship with someone outside of marriage. The, the flesh comes along and says, you know what, I need this drug because the flesh feels good when I take this drug. The devil came along and he came and said, hey, the lust of the flesh is the temptation to feel like I want to feel good. What scriptures do you have when these temptations come? And Jesus comes along and he says, you know what, I'm going to share with you how I'm going to deal with this, this, this temptation of the lust of the flesh. You see, it, it, lust of the flesh is anything that's soothing. It's when Satan comes along and the devil comes along and says, you deserve to feel good. You deserve it. You worked hard. You know what? Just doing a little bit of that, it's going to be okay. Just do it. See, that's what the devil, the devil comes along and says, you deserve it. Jesus comes along and says, but Jesus said to him, to the devil, in his face, that's what we should do. It is written. He came up and says, it, he didn't say, you know what, I'm the, I'm the son of God. I'm going to be taking you down in a little bit. Don't, don't worry about it. No, my father. No, he says, it is written. He says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He comes back with the word. A lot of people that are, have addictions, they stay on those addictions because they have nothing to come back. They, oh, Jesus, just deliver me. Jesus, 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 God, just deliver me. Help me get off this. No, there, there has to be some scripture. There has to be, Lord, your word, if I hit on my heart, then I should not go back into drugs, that I might do the right thing. And Jesus comes back, it is written. He didn't try to rationalize or talk to the devil and just, no, you know what, just, man, maybe I should. I do deserve to eat. I have the power to turn this stone into bread. I'm the son of God. I was there when, when the heavens were, were created and I was there when the stars and, the, you know what, I, I deserve, I'm hungry. I fasted for 40 days. Shouldn't I just have some bread? And he realized, you know what? Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the second temptation comes. Then the devil taking up on the high mountain, showing him all the kingdoms of the world in the moment of time. So here is he takes him to this mountain peak, shows him all the kingdoms just in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all authority has been given to you. And the glory... For this has been delivered to me, and I will give to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. The lust of the eyes. Ooh, that looks good. I want that. Ooh, that look, doesn't the devil come along and put things in your visual Ooh, I, I'm a married man, and I have a wonderful wife. I have beautiful kids. But then, ooh, who's that girl? Who's that girl that God put in, that, that the devil put in front of my, front of my face? The lust of the, of the eyes. It could, be that, it could be the temptation of, of maybe of greed and maybe of materialism. It's one of those things that the lust of the eyes is, I see it, so I want it. It's amazing how we live in a world of so much visuals and the lust of the eyes. You're scrolling through Instagram and how many stories are going to come up of ads. Oh, wow, that looks good. Oh, I... It has happened to me. I, I saw this thing of some artificial grass, and we were thinking, well, maybe we could go, and that looks good. Man, that's a good price. I went, and I ordered it. 
And all of a sudden, I didn't hear back from them. I tried to get a hold of them. The, 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 uh, the website is no longer there. You call the number. There was nothing there, and it was a scam. But gratefully, I used my American Express card. So I called the American Express. I said, hey, this and that. I'm disputing this. And all of a sudden, it's like, okay, they, they, they saved me, but I saw it ooh, when I wanted it. And I know there's all, a lot of you out there that have done the same thing. That have done the same thing. Get this, you get that. You go on, you go on, watch something on TV and look at that burger and it looks so delicious and I want that burger, but when you get it, it doesn't look like the burger that was on TV. <laughs> You're going down the street and the billboards, it's like, ooh, I want that. Ooh, I, I want that car and I want that. It's the, 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 the lust of the, the eyes of seeing the visuals and Jesus comes along. The devil, the devil say, I could give you that. I could, everything that you see is, can be yours. Jesus says, what does he say? It is written. Well, first of all, he says, get behind me, Satan. Satan, get your butt behind me, for it is written. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only will you serve. Don't allow your eyes to worship other things, materialism and money and fame and fortune. I see that, so I want it. What about this, the third temptation? Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you, if you, if you are the son of God. See, he's always going to question who you are. If you are the son of God. If you are who you say you are, throw yourself down from here, for it is written. Now, now the devil knows the word. The devil knows the word of God more than we know the word of God. So, so if he knows the word of God, how much more is it valuable that it is hidden in our hearts that we know the word of God? Come on. I'm telling you. He comes along and says... Okay, you've been, you've been telling me it is written, it is written. Okay, I, I'm going to come back and throw it back in your face. And he says, the devil says to him, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. And in their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Okay. It's written there. But just because it's written in the Word of God doesn't mean that we should go and tempt God. And this is where Jesus comes back and says, well, yeah, that's true, devil. But, but, but that the pride of life comes along. And this is where the pride of life, because it comes along and says, you know what? I, I, I could handle this. I could do this. I, I don't need the grace of God. You know what? I'll, I'll just, if I mess up, I'll, I'll ask God's forgiveness and God will forgive me. Isn't that, isn't that what a lot of times people do? Oh, man, should I do this? this? But you know what? John, First uh, uh, John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins to God, he's faithful and just to forgive us all in righteousness. If I just do this, you know what? God will forgive me. God, God will forgive me. And we throw that back out because the pride says, you know what? I don't need that right now, but, but I know that if anything happens, I could come back. The pride of life is the temptation that it's owed to you. God, I deserve this. It's owed to me. Anything that leads to arrogance or pride or self uh, 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 presumptuous and uh, uh, boasting, that's what pride comes in. It says, yeah, yeah. But Jesus came and answered him and says, it has been said, it was written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. It is written. Don't tempt God. And Jesus had these as an example to us. He's saying, you know what, you're going to be, deal with lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. You're going to deal with the pride of life. Oh, you know what, I don't need to go to church no more. I don't need to read the Word. I, I've read the Word for 10 years of my life, and so you know what, I think I'm good now. 
That's the pride. You're tempting God because you're tempting God to say, you know what, I can now have enough of the word that now I could, I, I could live on my own. I'm here to tell you, the more that I read the word of God, the less I know about the word of God. And so don't get to that place that you're prideful. I've been in church for, you say, oh, I've been in church for five years now, and you know, I don't need to go to church no more. I, I could go uh, and, and take weekends off, and I'll watch online, and I'll do this. I, I, I'm good. Pride comes in to says, you know what, you're better than any temptation that comes that you're able to resist. Don't tempt God. Don't tempt God with you thinking, you know what, I, I, I could do this on my own. Jesus says, don't tempt, don't, don't tempt, the, you want to make right decisions, don't tempt the Lord your God. Why? Because he knew the word. He knew the, the written word of God. And then it says in verse 13, now when the devil had ended every temptation, like I said, those tempt, every temptation that you have is going to fall into those categories, less of the eyes, less of the flesh, and the pride of life. So when you're tempted to make the wrong decisions, you, you need to look back. What was that? Was I prideful? Was it my flesh that really wanted that? Or was it uh, the eyes that I saw something that just burned on the inside, made this, meaning that I had to have it? But he said when he, was, when he was done, had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Ooh. Until that opportune time. Until that time that you put your defenses down. Until the opportune time. He's, just like the Bible says, he's, he's around seeking to, to come and devour. The devil seeks around like a roaring light. See, this is one of the scriptures. I don't, I don't know. I think it's in James or whatever. But, but I know it's hidden in my heart. The devil's out uh, seeking around like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. Now, it might not be verbatim, but I know that it's in the word. And so I know that, you know what, oh, the devil, he's, uh, he's, he's out there. And he's going to wait. He's going to wait for that opportune time. Quickly, real quick, before we leave. Here's a couple things to think about about temptation. Number one, you need to expect it. When, uh, when to expect temptation is number one is this or A or whatever you want to take is, is after a great spiritual high. After a great spiritual high, man, we think, wow, I'm good. We used to take kids up to camp. We would go to conferences. We'd get on a spiritual high and we would always do a debriefing and say, hey, when you get back, you're in the mountains, you're away from your parents, you're away from all this stuff, temptations and everything. You're on a spiritual high. Man, you were, you were uh, speaking in tongues and praying and falling out in the spirit. You were just crying and weeping. God did a work on you. But when you get back, be careful. Because in a spiritual high, that's when the devil is going to come along. Because that's when we think, oh, I, I'm good. Man, I'm so good because you are... You're on that high of like, oh, man, I, I could do anything. Peter said, Jesus, you're the son of the living God. You're the Christ. Jesus said, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but the, the, the spirit of God. So that's another scripture that's been hidden in my heart. But from your father above. Man, he's like, see, you guys, you see. Jesus asked you the same questions you didn't even know. That's what, and pride comes in. And then all of a sudden, Jesus begins to tell him, okay, uh, upon that revelation, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus begins to talk about how he's now going to be going to the cross. Peter, on that spiritual high, telling these other disciples, you guys are kooks. You're just, you're, you're dumb. You're, you, you're ignorant. We, we've lived with them for three Three years and then all of a sudden Jesus says, Satan, get behind me. What? Because he was on a spiritual high. Be careful when you're on a spiritual high. That's when you should expect that. That's when you're at that place of vulnerability. 
He comes to put out the spark. Another area to think about, just real quickly, just two things real quickly and we're going to end. Uh, where to expect temptation? Where should you expect it? You should expect it in your identity, who you are in Christ. Are you really the son of God? Is God really going to forgive you? Does God really come along? All of a sudden, the devil will come along in your identity. If you're the son of the living God, didn't he come to, to, to Jesus because of that, that uh, temptation? Are you really Christ? He's going to come along uh, in, in your greatest need. What's your greatest need? What's that thing that you're hungry? Jesus' greatest need at the time was some food. He hadn't eaten for 40 days. He was hungry. What's the greatest need that's going to come and temptation is going to come and cause you to maybe pull back and make a wrong decision? And it starts with this. It starts with something that is harmless. It starts with something that is harmless. Maybe a little, like, wave if you're a married man and you see a, a lady and you're just kind of like, it's, it's harmless. And then all of a sudden she may come along and say, do a little back to you. And then you're like, peace out. <laughs> and she's like, the next day you go and it's at work and you just kind of like see she's going out and, oh, that, oh she eats there. Uh, oh, she goes to the coffee shop. I'm going to take a mental note. I'm going to try to go to the coffee shop again. And all of a sudden it begins to lead deeper into deeper, just with something simple. You're trying to be nice. But then the devil comes along and tries to get that vulnerability in your life. Could be the same thing with food. You know, you look at something, and it could be just harmless. You know, I just want just this little piece. That's and pretty soon you finish the whole pie. <laughs> finish the whole cake. Finish the whole shebang. And the last couple of things is here. What kind of approach should we expect? What was so tempting about Satan's approach. He says, I'm going to give it to you now. Hey, I'll give it to you right now. You see, the map, see everything right here? I could give it to you right now. Hey, you know what? You can have the bread right now. It, 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 could, it could be yours. And he comes along and he tries to tempt you. And Lord, what have I hit on my heart? That's why there's so many times it's like with the lust of the eyes, the things that you see on an ad or something, it's like, I got to have it now. I got to have it now. And we just jump into it. And it's like we haven't even thought about it. We haven't even discussed it with our spouse. Or we just kind of like, oh, I, I did this because I, I needed it now. And it gets us into trouble. Satan was coming along. And he was going to give it to him easy. It's easy. I give it to you easy. It, it's easy. It, it's, it's easy to get it. And then it gets to the place of you forgetting about the consequences. You, when you fall into sin, when you fall into doing something that you don't want to do, Lord, have I, 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 I hid their word in my heart that I should not sin against you or that I might do the right thing. When we do the wrong thing, when we get into that place, it's because we forgot about the consequences of our sin. It's sad when you hear preachers because they've gotten to the place, maybe it's the pride of life. Maybe it's the lust of the eyes because they wanted to be famous. or, And you hear about people that have, did not think about the consequences. All the people that are going to hurt, the family that is going to be lost. Your whole life ruined because consequences aren't there no more. It's like, oh, because what? The word of God. That word should be hidden in your heart of knowing that when I'm tempted, I'm going to come back. I, I need a scripture. You find a scripture. Find something that's going to help you. Get that in your heart. Have it written around on the walls, whatever you can. Because either the Bible will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from the Bible. Either the Bible will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from the Bible. I know this isn't a message. Some of you are probably thinking, yeah, I want to hear this. But I'm here to tell you, I'm gonna, I, I, I have to preach the word. 
I don't want more casualties falling into temptation because they don't know the word. In this church, we preach the word of God. I'm not going to give you just a bunch of uh, stories and a bunch of anecdotes and just, I, I'm not one of those funny preachers. Or I'm not one of those kind of preachers that runs around and just, just hype, 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 hype. I, I just, just the word. I was raised, my pastor would, boom, give us the word. Give us a word. Give us a word. And that's why I want to give you the word. I want you to have the word, Lord, that the word of God be hidden in your heart that you not sin against him. If you're not reading your Bible, read your Bible. If you didn't, if you got this and uh, you haven't continued on, start to today, July 25th. Start tomorrow, July 26th, whatever it takes. Look at mine is all. And, and you know what's so cool? Because this is how much I've read this year. This is how much I need to go. It's a sense of accomplishment. It's just like, wow, I did that. This is my second year going all the way through. Like I said, I, I've read the Bible many times in different areas, and, but not front to ca cover in a whole year. It's like, wow. And I, for me, it's like, wow, it's a sense of accomplishment. But not only that, I'm hiding it in my heart. I'm taking notes. I write things down. I'm reading, there's little, there's little, um, um, there's little life lessons that help you explain the word of God. When we had our, our uh, connect group at our house, we had great times. We did connect groups on Zoom. Uh, we took a break off of that, but we would just read for the week and then we would gather together. I want, if, if you don't have one, we have a few here at the front that I bought a while back. There's three of them. I think they're 15 bucks. Or you could go on the church center app and buy it. I encourage you to get it. I encourage you to read. Um, I'm going to probably be starting up another group for men where we meet once a week and just kind of talk. About, I, I, I just, I love it. I, I sent Nate a, a thing the other day because those of you who know Nate, he loves uh, uh, apologetics. God has spoken to it in his heart about uh, about apologetics and understanding how to defend your faith um, um, instead of just saying, oh, I just believe because I believe. But I sent him the scripture. Which one was it? Uh, do you remember? I think, I, I think it was uh, Paul came, and I just, I just clicked it and I sent it to him because I thought this is going to be encouraging to him. Um, it was in our text. I said, I, I, I said, um, what is it? Let me see. I said, it's Acts 17, 1 through 5, and it says, and according to Paul's custom, he went to them and for the three Sabbaths, oh, no, oh, oh, and for three Sabbaths, reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and giving evidence that Christ had to suffer and was raised again. In other words, so, Paul says, I'm giving them evidence. I'm not just telling them, hey, Jesus Christ rise from the dead. But he says, I'm going to give them evidence that Christ rose from the dead. So I just, just little things like that. I encourage you, get into the word. Get into the word. Whatever you do. I, I love it. Rick Warren, I think he says this. He goes, I read the Bible. Uh, he doesn't read a, a specific amount, but he says, I read the Bible until God speaks to me. For some people, you might be reading a long time. <laughs> but he doesn't just read it just to read it. Like, like I said, I'm going to end here in just in a moment. I didn't preach last week, so I'm like. Um, but for me, if you're an average reader, you could probably do it in 30 minutes. Maybe even less. If you're a good reader, you can do it less. Me, I take, I, I probably spend, I give myself at least an hour because I'm not really a great reader, but at the same time, I read it over and I look at it and I kind of take little notes. I write things down. Um, um, I, I like a little note that I wrote here. It said, don't always debate the word of God because... And I, says, I said, make it real and personal when, um, 
Fest, Felix was talking to, to, to Paul, and he was trying to debate the word of God. It's like, he's just trying to debate. He's trying to get into it, trying to get it with Paul. And, it just, and I just wrote there, you know, we don't need to always do that because there's some people that aren't just going to receive. But yet we need to be there to defend our faith. Anyway, I'm just going. Get ready. If you want to get into be a part of our my group, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably do that, get coffee someplace throughout the week, and then we're gonna sit down and just discuss because I think it's important. Father, I just thank you for today, Lord. I thank you for the word that was gone forth. I pray that, Lord, that everyone that heard was at the sound of my voice would hide the word in their hearts that they would not sin against you, that they would value the word of God so much and understand the importance of it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, before we close, um, I just want to make sure you're right with God. If you don't know Jesus Christ personally, you can read the word and you're not going to understand it. When we say yes to Jesus Christ, we become what the Bible says is born again. Our name's written in the last book of life. When we die, we go to heaven. But it's not just about going to heaven, but it's having the word of God in our hearts the Holy Spirit comes and lives on the inside of us. When we get to that place, when we read the word, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit reveals things to you. If you don't know Jesus Christ, I think there's a lot of people like, <laughs> just give me a couple minutes more. I think this is, this is one of the most important parts of the service. Because I want, if you don't know Jesus Christ, to know him. Because he will change your life. He will change your life. You don't have to understand it all. You don't have to know it all. You just have to have a willing heart. Say, Lord, I believe in faith that you died for my sins. I believe in faith that you rose again on the third day. Come into my life. Holy Spirit, come and live on the inside of me. Come and show me how to make right decisions in life, that I would live the life that you've called me to live. If you're in this place, you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, I'm just going to count to three. I want to see your hand go up. One, two, three. If you're saying, Pastor, I want you to pray with me. I want to pray that prayer. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want to understand you better, God. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody saying, Pastor, I want to pray that prayer. Don't be, don't be afraid. It's all right. We all had to do it at one time or another. Jesus says, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father in heaven. If you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. This is an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. Anybody? Anybody? Real quick. Well, I'm going to pray because there might be somebody watching online that needs to pray this. So if all of you could pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins, for giving me my sins, coming to my heart, and be Lord and Savior of my life. Today I give you my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want all of you to stand to your feet. Thank you, guys. Love you. Let's have, a, let's have an amazing week. This week, Father, I thank you for each and every person that is here. Father, I pray that as they go out this week, Father God, you're going to bring somebody in their path that they're going to be able to share the love of God with. And Father, I just pray that as we leave this place as a church, we're going to go out this week and love people to life. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. Youth Nugget Night Wednesday. <laughs>